Laban. We're going to look at Laban. A man in the Bible, probably not too familiar, but if you study and read your Bible, he's only in the book of Genesis. And the first place we're going to look is Genesis 24, 29, to identify who Laban is. Now, Laban, it says, Rebecca, that would be the wife or soon-to-be wife of Isaac, the son of Abraham, had a brother. His name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man, that would be Abraham's servant, out did a well. And it came to pass when he saw the earrings and bracelets upon his sister's hand. When he heard the words of Rebekah his sister, saying, Thus spake the man to me, that he came unto the man, Abraham's servant, and stood, or stood by the well. Now what we're going to see this part, and read the rest for yourself, is we're going to see that Laban is greedy. What Laban sees in his sister's hand, look at these, uh, look at these, these gems, look at the, these bracelets, look at what this man has to offer. Ooh, ah, you know. So, in verse twenty-nine and thirty is, and that's what that's important to look at. Now, in 2449, 2449, we see, and this is a new Bible, big print, and I can't turn the page. 2949. And now, if you will do kindly, this is the man speaking, with my master, Abraham, tell me, if not, tell me, and I may return to the right hand of the left hand. So what, what Abraham's servant has laid on the table now is, can we take Rebekah and bring her to Isaac? He's getting family permission. He's not going to have her, and he's not eloping with her, but he's not going to take her and set up an elopement between her and Isaac. He's going to get permission. And it's interesting because we're going to come back to Laban. So it says, Laban and Bethel answered and said, the thing proceeded from the Lord, we cannot speak unto thee bad or good. And then they asked Rebecca, he says, do you want to go with this man and meet Isaac to be your husband? And she, she's like, yeah, let's go. And you, uh, we'll let you to read that story on your own also. The rest of the chapter. So we have Haman showing up. He sees the riches. He takes part with the father. And allowing Abraham's servant to take Rebekah part of our study. And we're not studying Rebekah, but she plays into with Laban because they're brother and sister. Now, we turn to 2520. It's all King James 1611 Bible. And that's not what I want. Oh, I'm in 26. And don't do me no good to be in the wrong chapter. 25, 20. I'm going to go back to my old Bible in a moment. 25, 20. It says, And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife. Okay, part of what we read in the chapter before. The daughter of Bethel, that's her father, the Syrian of Panorama, and sister to Laban, the Syrian. So we're dealing with Laban 
is a Syrian. And the Syrians get in the news most of the time. Syria. And he is brother to Rebecca, who marries Isaac. So, playing on more, we go to chapter 27. Chapter 27, 43. Now, Jacob has deceived his father in the birthright that Esau has sold. Esau is angry enough to want to kill his brother. So Rebecca, there she is again, speaks to her son Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, she tells her young son, who's not married, verse 43, Now therefore, my son Jacob, obey my voice, and rise, flee thou to Laban, my brother, to Haran. In verse 45, until your brother's anger succeeds. So, we learn that this man, Laban, is brother to Rebecca. He's a little greedy. He allows with their father to let Rebecca go. He's a Syrian. And he's in Haran. And Jacob is sent to Laban in Haran. Flee from Esau or Eden. So, 28.2. Arise and go pen around to the house of Bethel, thy mother's father. This is God speaking. And take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. So go to grandpa's house. And Uncle Laban, I think he's uncle. No, he'd be first cousin. He's he, he's a cousin. Cousin Laban. Because he's Rebecca's. No. He's Rebecca's brother, so to Jacob, he would be Uncle Laban. Run to Uncle Laban's house who's dealing at Grandpa's. And God says of your cousins, the daughter of Laban, plural, your mother's brother, take the wife. So what we're looking now is God approved. And what God's trying to do is for the nation of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is they're trying to keep this nation one pure blood. No mix. That's why the Jews in the New Testament, that's why they, they are disfavored with the Samaritans because they are Jews and Gentiles mixed together. They're not one nation. The Jews were required by the law. No, there's no law now. But they are required by the law that they were divided into 12 tribes. They were to marry in their tw tribes. You could not have a Benjaminite go marry a Danite. You couldn't have a 
uh, uh, Ephanite marry into Zephanite. You had to have your tribe stay in your tribe and stay in your land. In the case here, there's no tribe, and, and God's telling Jacob, run to your, it's your family. I know, they're cousins, but don't you say nothing about it. God says, take take your one, your cousin and marry them. Keep your, your race pure. And God honored it. By Jacob fleeing, by his mother's request, that he stole a blessing that Esau sold. Phew. Only in the Bible. So, that's that. 28.5. And Isaac sank away Jacob, and he went to Padaram unto Laban, the son of Bethel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob, and Esau's mother. There it is. Okay. So, 29, chapter 29, 10. And what we're going to do is have you read on your own. We're just going to hit the highlights. We're looking at one man, Laban. He's going to show up, and then he's going to disappear. Chapter 29, 10. Jacob's in the land. This woman comes up, verse 9. And while he spake, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban. This would be his cousin. This would be Rachel, uh, Rebecca's niece, I believe, and I could be wrong. The daughter of Laban, his mother's brother. Remember, Laban is Rebecca's brother. Now we're dealing with Laban and Rachel. Rachel is the daughter of Laban. And she's keeping the sheep. So Laban is involved with husbandry. And so is his daughter. And we get the thing is that Jacob falls in love with Rachel. But we're not looking at that. Verse 13, it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him, embraced him, and kissed him, and brought him to his house, and he took Laban all these things. So Laban's pleased to see his nephew. I hope I'm right. In verse 14, Laban said, Surely thou art bone, my thou art my bone and my flesh. And he bowed with him about the space of a month. So it's almost the thing like that Adam says about his wife. Bone of bone, bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, but not exactly. But he says, Listen, we're family. My sister is your mother, Jacob, and we're related. In verse 15, Jacob and Laban said unto Jacob, because thou art my brother. Now look at that word brother. They're not brothers. Laban is his uncle. Jacob is his nephew. And he says, brothers. It's a brother that we are kinship. When you go to a Baptist church, uh, I will address somebody in church, brother so-and-so. And they'll call me and say, Brother Stiley. And now we're not brothers. We're brothers in Christ. So it's the relationship that's there. And Laban had two daughters, verse 16, and the name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger is Rachel. So Laban has two daughters, Leah and Rachel. Verse 18, Jacob loved Rachel. And 
And verse 19, Laban said, It's better for me to give her to thee than I should give her to another man. Abide with me. Jacob served seven years for Rachel. So the agreement is Jacob will work for Laban, who we're talking about, seven years. That's an interesting number for Jewish people. Seven. And at the end of seven years, the return payment of Laban to Jacob is agreed that Jacob gets his younger daughter, Rachel, to be his wife. Okay? Now we're going to start to see what this man is. Verse 21, Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go into her. So, the seven years is up. Jacob says, Okay, payday. Verse 22, And Laban gathered together all the men in, of the place of the area and made a feast. In the Bible, they have the wedding feast first. That's the, the, the marriage is the flesh joining the flesh. There's no preacher. Okay? So what they do is they have a wedding ceremony, and then the bride and the groom go off into the honeymoon, like we have here. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him, and he, and he went unto her. And Laban gave his daughter Leah Zipho the maid for a handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is it thou hast done unto me? Did I not serve thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? And Laban said, It must not be so in our country to give the younger before the, the firstborn. So Laban goes back on his agreement and gives Jacob his the wrong daughter purposely. Though there was a, 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 a you know, it's not done that the younger before the old. That's not the case. Jacob and Laban made an agreement. Now watch this. Fulfill her week, verse 27, and will give thee also service which thou serve with me in yet seven other years. And David did so. I mean, Jacob did so. And he gets free. So, Laban gets Jacob to serve seven years and one week more. Fourteen years. For Rachel, when they had made an agreement, we read, seven years. That's a swindler. We'll see in a moment why he wanted Jacob around longer, but not right now. He lied to Jacob. He deceived Jacob. Now Jacob has two wives to take care of, and all he wanted was one. And it's funny how God said wives, plural. So, you see where we're reading that now. Chapter 30. Twenty-five, and it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph, the second to last son. Jacob said to Laban, "Send me away that I may go unto my own place, to my country." Uh, okay, I've served everything I'm supposed to do. I've done everything I'm supposed to do. I got my wives. I got my children. I'm going to go back to where my father. I'm going to go back into the land that God's promised us. 
I want to leave. Verse 26, give me my wives, my children, of whom he had, whom I have served thee, let me go. For thou knowest my service, which I have done thee. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I found favor in thy eyes, tarry, stay. For I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for thy sake. Look at that. That's why he wanted Jacob there seven more years. Jacob was profitable unto him. We're going to see that even more in a moment. So since the coming of Jacob, a man of God through Isaac and Abraham, Jacob's hard work and the blessing of Jehovah God, That greedy man is like, <laughs> here's Leah. Well, you know, we ought not to have the, fir the firstborn. To and no, 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 that wasn't agreement. All right, since you love Rachel so much, I'll get you seven more years of service. That's why he swindled them. He swindled them because of verse 27. I learned by experience the Lord has blessed me for thy sake. Do you realize there are places of businesses there are places where christians are and the praying christian and the bible studying christian and the witnessing christian and the christians that are well blessed by god and god is blessed by them that their employer their neighborhood their whatever it is are continually blessed because of that christian You, as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, can be a blessing to your employer, to your family, to your neighborhood, to your church. You can be a blessing. Jacob was. Now, Laban took advantage of it. Now, listen, your employer might take advantage of you. Oh, yeah, that's Jacob. That's Jacob. Okay, that's Jacob. Uh, and he says, appoint me my wages. <laughs> Jacob earns them. J Jacob says, listen, I, he says, thou knowest how I served thee, verse 29, how I served thee, and how thy cattle was with me. And it was little which thou hast before I came. You didn't have nothing when I came. And it's now increased into a multitude. Since I've come, your little has been much with Jehovah in it, using me. That's the reason why Jacob had to work seven more years. Good and plenty. Now, sometimes a church may want to keep a Christian because the Christian witnessing and bringing people to church. Your employer may love you because you are bringing business. So, chapter 31, Laban's sons, Jacob has taken away, he lay lie. <laughs> Jacob has stolen, and you can go read the end of chapter 30 in chapter 31. In verse 2, Jacob beheld the contents of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. Laban believes the lies of his sons. After they testified what we just read in chapter 30, Jacob has been blessing Laban by God. And Laban's sons get up and lie. This is Jacob's son-in-laws. You know why they're upset? 
because they're not producing as much as Jacob was producing. There are people in church that get upset because you are doing more for the Lord than what they are doing. We run into a lot of Jacobs in Christianity, but we're not looking at Jacob. So, Jacob goes on the run. He takes his wives, he takes his children, and he goes on the run. And, verse 17, Jacob takes up and goes. Okay, let me try to turn this page. And Laban hears about it. He gets up and starts chasing Jacob. God comes to a, in a dream to Laban, verse 23 and 24. Don't you dare lay a hand. Don't you dare do Jacob any harm. All right? Laban gets up with Jacob. Verse 26. And Laban said to Jacob, What hast thou done? Thou hast stolen away unawares to me. Rachel did. Rachel stole, we didn't read it. Rachel, we're not looking at Rachel. Rachel stole some of Laban's gods. Laban has nothing to do with Jehovah God. Laban has gods. And they've been stolen. And carried away my daughters. No, no, no. Did not Jacob work 14 years for his... Jacob is full and clear and payment in full when it comes to Leah and it comes to Rachel. How dare you say what you just said. You carried away my daughters. They may be your daughters, but they are now Jacob's wives. He's greedy. As captains take it with a sword. No. He told you he was leaving. You made a deal with the, the, the striped cattle and the, and the dotted ca camel. Uh, every, all the animals. You made a deal. Your son's life. You backed on your deal. And, and Jacob felt like, you know what? Things are not going well. I, I, I told you I was leaving. And I left. Jacob has done no wrong to Laban. Now, the other aspect of Jacob we can look at, but we're not going to. Verse 27. Wherefore didst thou flee away secretly? How did he flee away secretly with two wives, 11 sons, servants, and all these animals. How did he, How did someone not notice? Maybe in the eyes of Laban, Laban didn't. He didn't care to check. He didn't. He wasn't responsible enough. You know, he put it on the hands of Jacob, like he put it, like all that was put in the hands of Joseph. And steal away from me. And does not tell me. Yes, he did tell you. That I might have sent away thee with mirth. I, I give you, you know, last time he, he gave him mirth, he gave him the wrong wife. And Jacob had to serve seven more years. You know what Jacob's saying? I ain't doing that again. I learned my lesson. I can't trust you, buddy, with a party. I wouldn't give Laban another party chance with songs, with tabret, with harp, music, partying. And has not suffered me, allow me to kiss my sons and my daughters. And that would be his grandchildren. 
and his two daughters. Well, where were you, buddy? What were you doing? Thou hast now done foolishly in doing so. Uh, maybe. Okay. It is in my it is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. What do you do wrong? All right, the stealing way of the gods. Rachel made a big mess for Jacob. Having not the stolen wit with the gods, Jacob was able to flee away unharmed and in innocent before Laban. But those gods, thank you, Rachel. But the God of your father, the God of your father, not my God, your God, Jehovah, your father Isaac, Abraham, spank unto me yesterday. You figure if God spoke to you, figure be your God. But he still has this God. Take heed thou speak not to Jacob, neither good or bad. And now though thou wouldest need to be gone, because thou sword longest or you big sissy little brat, you you wanna go because you your mama's boy, you miss home. No, it's been over 14 years. <laughs> He's done his purpose. He's fulfilled his contract. Time to go home. After thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? And that's what Rachel and Jacob answered and said, Lame, because I was afraid. For I said, preventure that I would take by force thy daughter from me. So Jacob's being honest. He said, listen, buddy, I don't trust you. I think you're a thief. You're already a liar. You're a deceiver. He says, from whom the gods? And he goes looking for the gods, and we're not going to read that. Look at verse 38. Jacob speaking, this 20 years have I been with thee. 20 years. 14 for, for his wives. Thy ewes and thy she-goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. That which was torn of beasts I brought not unto thee, I bear the loss of. So listen, if any of your beasts were torn by other animals, I pay for that beast out of my flock. That's what Jacob's saying. Of my hand thou didst require it. Hey, I had a hundred sheep, Jacob. There's ninety-nine. No, there's a hundred. And he takes the hundred from his flock. The one from his flock and puts it in Laban's flock. Now Laban has a hundred sheep. And Jacob is missing one. Because Jacob was full tally, full credential to what he was in charge of Laban. Not once could Laban say Jacob stole anything. Not once could Laban say that Jacob was unfaithful. Not once could he say Jacob lied and steal. But when we turn the coin over and look at Laban, it's a whole different person. He says at the end of the verse, whether stolen by day or stolen by night, I, pay, I paid. I took out of my crop. Thus I was in the day the drought consu consumed me. So he's in the drought. No. And the frost by night it is freezing cold at night. And my sleep departed from my eyes. I couldn't sleep sometimes. I had to watch the animals. I lost sleep. I was in frost. I was with drought. And I stayed faithful to your animals. Thus I have been 20 years, 41, in thy house. I served thee 14 years with the two daughters, so they're not stolen. 
They're mine. And six years for thy cattle. I earned those cattle. I earned those wives. And thou hast changed my wages ten times. How do you change his wages? All right, I worked seven years for, for Rachel. He gives him Leah. And Laban did that six times in 20 years that Jacob worked for him. Your employer does that sometimes in America. I'm amazed sometimes with, with these nursing. They go work for these places, and the places have them buy their own thermometer. They make them buy their own equipment. Oh, wait a minute. What's the deal with that? Except the God of my father, look, look how he says that, the God of Abraham, the God of, uh, and the fear of Isaac, had been with me, surely thou hast sent me away now empty. And Jacob's being completely honest. Jacob said, you know what? If you had the opportunity, it would have been nothing for me. My wives would still be with you. My 11 children, well, 12 pregnancy, would still be with you. All the cattle, all the animals would be with you. I'd be going home to my dad's house with nothing. That's Laban. You know what your American employer, if it wasn't for the, you know what they send you home with? Nothing. That's capitalism. The more money I can get, and the less I can give you. The more of a price tag, and the less quality. That's capitalism. All right, look at verse 43. And Laban answered and said to Jacob, These daughters are my daughters. Okay. These children are my children. No, those grandchildren are not your children. Mr. DCF. Those children belong to Abr uh, excuse me. Those children belong to Jacob, Leah, Rachel, Zipporah, and I forget what the other maid's name. Jacob has four wives, two wives and two concubines. He has eleven children. They're your grandchildren, but they're not your children. Look at Laban. And we have today, in 2023, you know, the grandparents are, are trying to steal the grandchildren. Laban. Bible's up to date. We're reading now the Genesis, the first book of the Bible, and you'll find modern things. You'll find things in your life that Jacob had. You can... You can Poor thing with your with your uh, employer, Jacob. You've been swindled, Jacob. You have done your part of the deal and you got the raw end, Jacob. You got the in-laws fighting you, Jacob. And we're looking at Laban. Laban is... The problem. These children are my children. No, they're not. These cattle are my cow. No! You made a deal that Jacob served six years for the cattle. Jacob worked six years and you're saying those cattle's mine. You are a thief and you are a liar and your contract you did not you did not obey that contract. No wonder Jacob took off. Look what he said. And all that thou seest is mine. <laughs> all right, let's put it like this. You go to the car dealer, 
you get a car. And 10 years later, you you pay off the loan and you get the title. But the title is not given to you. The title is stolen by the dealer that sold you the car. And you say, hey, what are you doing with that title? It ain't your car. It's my car. Wait a minute. I, I worked 10 years. I paid off that, t that car. I paid it off early. That title belongs to me. And, and I, no, it's mine. You say, that's foolish. That's stupid. That's Laban. You go to work Monday morning. You work eight hours. You go to work Tuesday. You work eight hours. You go to work Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, eight hours. And, and next week on Friday, you get your paycheck, and it says zero. And you walk into your employer's office and say, hey, this check says zero. Yeah, so? I worked 40 hours last week. Yeah, thank you very much. Where's my pay? He ain't giving it to you. It's mine. What is that, Laban? And their family. He is Rachel, uh, uh, excuse me, he is Rebecca's brother, and he is swindling. And verse 44, let's, no, let's make a covenant. Let's get together and do this big deal. And they gather stones up together and they eat upon the heap. And they called the heap as a witness that, you know, Laban goes back to his house, Jacob goes back to his house, and no one's going to cross this heap in, in, in war or, or problems. He says in verse 49, Mizpah, where he said, The Lord watch between me and thee when we are absent from one another. Okay, that sounds good. Look what he, Now, look at Laban. If thou shalt afflict my daughters, reality, reality is that's none of your business, Laban. If he afflicts his daughters, that is to the men of Jacob's city. That is up to Isaac. And the people, that has nothing to do with you, Laban. Stop trying to keep your foot in Jacob's door where you don't have it to belong. Or if thou take otherwise before my daughters, none of your business, Laban. Which Jacob doesn't. No man is with us, see God is it? Which God? Which God, Laban? Your gods were stolen and no one could find them in Rachel's furniture of the camels. That's a great God. God is witness betwixt me and thee. So Laban sets forth to still keep his shoe in the door of Jacob's house. He's a swindler. And he says in verse uh, 52, the heap is a witness. It's a pillar be a witness. I will not pass over this heap to thee, and that thou shalt not pass over this heap or this pillar unto me for harm. Okay, we're not going to harm each other. The God of Abraham, the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge between us and Jacob, swear by the fear of his father Isaac. And Jacob offered sacrifice, verse 54, upon the mount, and called the brethren to eat bread. There they did eat bread, and tarried all night in the mount. And early in the morning, Laban rose up, kissed his sons and his daughters, and blessed them, 
And Laban departed and returned to his place, and you don't hear about Laban no more. That greedy man, that swindler, goes off back to his place, and end of story. Don't be a labor.